Um, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Asim Mehraz. Uh, this is the presentation of our conference paper with the title of Embodied Energy Modeling of uh, Modular Residential Building uh, <clears throat> Using Beam. The authors of this paper are me, Dr. Barati, and Dr. Shen. Uh, after the, the Paris Agreement about climate change in 2015, policies are pushing the construction industry to adopt and design more energy efficient buildings because it is one of the major contributors to energy consumption and it is responsible for almost 40 percent of the world's energy usage because of that energy efficient buildings um, are becoming an important subject to reduce the energy demand of the buildings besides construction industry is far behind uh, other industries in terms of productivity Modular construction is a method that can promote construction industry by improving its sustainability. It can reduce cost, time, material waste. So it triggers us to study on the energy analysis of uh, modular buildings. A building consumes energy throughout its whole life cycle. EN standard uh, classified building life cycle into several stages. Um, all the energy consumption during the material production, transportation, on-site construction, maintenance, demolishing, and disposal is called embodied energy or EE. And the energy consumption in the user stage is called operational energy or OE. Uh, due to the long duration, various resources and uncertainties, construction projects require more uh, integrated energy approaches to assess the life cycle energy more simply. BIM can reduce this complexity and help the design team uh, in making life cycle analysis or LCA more practical. So several works have been done to integrate BIM's application into LCA. Some researchers uh, propose a BIM framework for um, assessing the effects of various construction options in terms of uh, building envelope on the EE and environmental impact. So by identifying the materials which have the most contribution in the embodied energy, designer uh, can change the design to, <clears throat> to reduce the EE by changing uh, the building elements. Uh, there are also studies that rely on other tools uh, for doing LCA. They extract building data from BIM platform and then import it to other LCA tools like uh, OpenLCA and Simo Pro. However, uh, relying on external LCA tools for the energy assessment brings some issues. Uh, for example, the designer needs to manually match the building information with the input formats of those tools, uh, which is time consuming and error prone. And uh, in most of previous studies, only material production phase was considered for the embodied energy analysis and uh, transportation and construction stages were ignored. Also, less attention has been paid to modular construction. In this study, we assess embodied energy consumption of modular buildings using uh, beam technology. Uh, this is the framework of current study. The first step is defining research goal and scope, which affects the next steps. The scope of uh, the scope or research boundary, as I mentioned, is uh, the product stage, transportation and construction stage, the next step is life cycle inventory. All the input and output information within the research boundary should be collected and stored. Uh, for the modular construction, we have two more stages than the conventional construction. One of the stages is transportation of the material to the modular factory. And the other stage is uh, offsite construction when the modules are manufactured. Finally, we implemented the framework on a real case study to verify its applicability. I chose um, Autodesk Revit as a platform for BIM, um, as it's a common tool for designing and visualizing both architectural and structural plans for building. For the energy analysis, we need all the information about the building's geometry, elements, and their properties, such as uh, their densities. We use Dynamo to export all the relevant data and store it to the external database. Uh, Dynamo is an open source visual uh, programming language for Revit. It enables users to sort the building elements and their information in the sequence that we want. 
By scripting in Dynamo, it can um, extract the building data from Revit and store it, store it to Excel. We use ICE database uh, to get the information about embodied energy for construction and material. For calculating embodied energy for the material, we only need to multiply materials mass to their energy coefficient. Uh, energy coefficients were obtained from ICE database, and the mass of materials was derived from uh, Revit by multiplying materials volume to their densities, and the calculations were done in Dynamo environment. Uh, transportation energy includes uh, transporting uh construction elements from factories to plant and then transporting modules to the job site it is affected by the transportation distance and the equipment information such as uh, engine size and engine load construction energy includes off-site and on-site construction it is affected by the duration of activities and the equipment information i should mention here that embodied energy of uh, modules manufacturing is not a simple task um, to be quantified because the process of manufacturing models uh, does not belong to a single project and a particular task is producing the models of several projects at the same time um, these are the results from applying the framework to the case study the case study is a modular house in sydney uh, the material production energy is categorized into building elements and types of materials. Here, materials are mainly concrete, steel, and timber. Transportation energy, which is highly affected by the distance, uh, distances between factories and job sites. Um, construction energy is categorized by different tasks for constructing the building. Uh, such as earthwork activities and modules assembly, uh, assembly using uh, crane. So in the end, uh, we can estimate the contribution of each stage on the energy consumption. Also, we can detect the materials and elements which have the most contribution uh, in the embodied energy. As can be seen, the energy contribution of those two, uh, two extra stages for transportation and offset construction of a modular building is quite similar to the other transportation and on-site construction uh, in our case of study, so it cannot be ignored, especially for those cases uh, that the travel distance is a lot. And um, although the contribution of the building material on the embodied energy is the most, compared to transportation and construction, still those two stages uh, consume significant energy in general, and it needs to be included in the energy assessment and reports. So different projects scheme um, can be investigated to reduce the total energy consumption. Um, in summary, we developed a framework for assessing the embodied energy of uh, modular buildings in one platform using beam environment. So there's no need to use other LCA tools for this assessment. We also included uh, transportation and construction stage stages into the energy analysis. Uh, this study can be used as a base platform to quantify EE and uh, reduce the energy consumption of the modular buildings. Uh, by guiding designers to come up with more sustainable building plans. Uh, the future work improved the framework uh, by coupling, <coughs> uh, by including operational energy of the building. Also energy efficiency of the modular building can be improved uh, by coupling the framework with optimization methods. Um, thank you for your kind attention. I would like to introduce our team at the University of New South Wales. Uh, we mainly focus on automation in construction, also sustainability in construction. Uh, my work is more related to improving the energy efficiency of modular buildings. Um, if you have any questions, I would be happy to 